Hello there. Mm, welcome to this uh, lecture of uh, probability methods in civil engineering. Uh, today it is fifth lecture, and in this lecture we will cover uh, the some standard uh, discrete probability distribution that will be very useful for this um, mm, for different problems in civil engineering. Basically, uh, this class and maybe one or two uh, two classes we will cover some standard uh, distribution of the random variables. And today's class mostly we will discuss about the discrete random variables and next or uh, next one or two classes we will cover the different um, distribution for continuous random variable. So, these distribution, these discrete distributions uh, even though limited, but have uh, some uh, application in different uh, problems that we will discuss one after another uh, them and we will start with our uh, presentation with some a quick recapitulation of the PDF of the discrete random variable. So, our today we will discuss on this uh, discrete probability distribution and this there are different discrete probability distribution and here there is some list is gi given. It is not necessary that these are the only, dis uh, only distribution which are discrete there may be some other, but mostly the civil engineering problem the application of civil engineering problem limited to uh, these distributions. So, we will first today's lecture we will first start with the PDF of discrete random variable that we this part we covered in uh, the last uh, couple of classes, but we will just quickly see that what this uh, distribution is that in general what is this distribution. Then we uh, then will just show that one after another the binomial distribution, then we will go to the multinomial distribution, then uh, Poisson distribution, geometric distribution, negative binomial distribution, hypergeometric distribution. So, this distribution is having uh, different application in different civil engineering problem. For example, when you call about the binomial distribution, we generally think of this uh, different uh, uh, rate of success or failures so of uh, any particular event. When you talk about multinomial, we generally go for some, uh, some more than uh, uh, more than two or two outcomes, so um, more than two possibilities. So that distribution we only see through uh, multinomial distribution. Similarly, for the Poisson distribution, we talk about in terms of its occurrence over a time or space or over an area, and those things. Particularly for this rainfall phenomena, whether it is a rainy day or non-rainy day, or um, the um, the railway accident and all this kind of problem, we generally deal with that Poisson distribution. Then there are or uh, one after another the geometric distribution comes, then uh, negative binomial distribution comes, hypergeometric distributions comes, all this distribution we will see. First we will see this distribution, what are these different distribution properties, they are PMA particularly that you know that for discrete random variable uh, that probability mass function we uh, use. So, we will see what are the PMA the probability mass function for different distribution first and they are uh, some of the um, for moments that first moment, second moment we will see and then we will discuss about some of their applications in different civil engineering problem. So, to uh, start with this discrete random variable as we have discussed earlier also that a discrete random variable is a function that can take only a finite number of values. So, uh, so that value it, it is not continuous over the over the domain over the sample space. It can take only some finite uh, numbers, and in mostly in general case, uh, this is generally equidistant. Uh, that one, two, three, like that. Even though that is not the compulsory case. And the probability density function of a discrete random variable indicates the correspondence between the values taken by the random variable and their associated probabilities. And it is concentrated as a mass of a particular value and generally known as probability mass function. So, these things we discuss as when we are talking about it can take some uh, finite number of values. So, this here the probability is not treated as a density rather we treat that probability to be concentrated at those values means which that random variable can take. So, it can be treated as a mass the which is concentrated at that particular value and that is why this distribution is generally known as this probability mass function. So, uh, 
Now, this probability mass function uh, PMF is the probability distribution of a discrete random variable say this discrete random variable is denoted as x uh, which is generally denoted by this small p x x. So, here this x denotes as we have uh, discussed earlier that x denote that random variable and this small x denote that particular value of that uh, random variable. So, this x are now the finite in number some specific values that it can take. So, this small p indicates that that is this is the probability mass function and when we indicate that this that uh, cumulative distribution function then we replace this one as capital X as we discussed earlier. So, this p x x this thing indicate that the probability of the value when it takes a particular value x that is x equals to x taken by that random variable x. Uh, so, uh, these things to so a particular function, so this is now a function which is uh, which is, uh, deno which, is uh, which is denoting the probabilities for a particular value that this random variable can take. Now, these functions also as we discussed that should follow some properties to become a valid PMF that valid probability mass function. So, and these properties are uh, shown like this that for each and every value of that uh, random variable can take that should be greater than equal to uh, 0 and this is valid for all possible values of the x. And also that summation of all these probabilities should be equals to 1. Now, when we discuss the different probability uh, distribution function for discrete uh, random variable uh, just now what we given this uh, list that uh, this list. So, we can test that these two properties. So, whatever the stand these are the standard uh, discrete uh, random variable which is available. So, we can check these two properties that whether uh, uh, this uh, these two conditions that is the which is required for this uh, PMF is satisfied or not that we can check. So, to uh, we will start with this binomial distribution. Uh, this binomial distribution is used to find the probability of getting x number of occurrence of a particular event in a sequence of n repeated trials. These trials are called the Bernoulli tri uh, trials provided that the following assumptions hold good. There are only two possible outcome for each tri each trial and which are arbitrarily called as success and failure. So, when we talk about that one particular random experiment and that experiment is having some uh, two specific outcome. So, when we are talking about this two specific out outcome, so this is this success and failure is arbitrary. Now, uh, if I just go for the very basic example of, of, of um, tossing a coin then I can say that that uh, um, coming out of head is success and coming out of tail is the failure. So, this is this is arbitrary it is not that head is always success and tail is failure I can just uh, I can just uh, reverse the notation as well. To some of the specific example of civil engineering if I say that a, a, um, a reservoir has is some particular high flood level. So, above that we can we have to uh, have to consider that this uh, water level is dangerous. So, I can say that the outcome are two whether it is below or above the uh, high flood le level. Now, in this case I can I can denote that above the high flood level is my success case and below the uh, high flood level is the failure case. So, this is nothing to do with the real life scenario that which one should be success and which one should be which one should be fa failure. So, one one outcome one particular event I can say that this is success and this is fa failure. And for the binomial distribution when we are discussing we have to remember that we are considering only two possible outcome and two possible out outcome are also this um, should be uh, should be uh, mutually exclusive that is that uh, occurrence of one event will automatically indicate that uh, non occurrence of the other particular other possible uh, outcome. So, that is why so when we say that there the, so when we say that these are the Bernoulli's trials then this Bernoulli's trials the first assumption that it must hold good is that there are only two possible uh, outcome and these uh, these outcomes are arbitrarily we can call that one is success and another one is failure. Now, the probability of the success is same for each trial 
Now, again when we are talking about that this probability of outcome of each trial is same for the for the different trials, then what we mean is that um, is that so um, we, if we take the basic example of this uh, throwing a uh, or tossing a coin, then I can say that the probability of coming of this head is equals to some number say 0 0.5 for 0 0.5. So, that number is fixed for each trial. So, if I do if I repeat that particular uh, particular trial, then that probability of that particular outcome should not change. Now, if I say that in a in a particular uh, day for that reservoir uh, problem if I say then in a particular day whether the reservoir level the reservoir water level should cross the high flood level or not that should have some uh, probability and that probability should remain same for, for the different trials that we are considering if we consider that particular uh, random event to be Bernoulli distribution. Now, the question is how to assign that particular probability that is a that is a different issue that we that we will uh, discuss again in the success in the successive classes. But what we should remember at this point is that that particular event which we are arbitrarily naming as success that particular event probability of that particular event should be known to us and that should be fixed for for all the trials that we are going to uh, conduct. So, that is why it says that the probability of the success is same for each trial. Now, the outcomes for different trials are independent. Now, this is also in this is also important in the sense that when we are talking about that I am I am conducting a particular trial. So, this trial outcome of this trial whether success or failure should not depend on what we got just immediately immediately previous trial. So, successive trials are independent to each other. So, and the last condition, last assumption of this Bernoulli trial is there is a fixed number of trial to be conducted. So, this n, so how many trials that we are going to conduct to get that x number of occurrence of this particular event which we are calling as success here. So, this n should be known. So, what are the two things that we know here prior to we um, prior you go for this go, go to define this binomial distribution are the two things. One is that total number of trials that we are considering and the probability of success for, for the each, each, tri each trial. So, these two information should be known and with these two information known and with all these four assumptions uh, um, to be satisfied we can define what is this binomial distribution. So, if the probability of success again I repeat that this su success is the arbitrary in, in the sense of arbitrary a particular event out of two, two possible outcome I can tell that it is to be success. So, if the probability of success that is the occurrence of an event in each trial is given by this p. So, this p is the probability of success which is known to us which just now I discussed. So, this p is known to us that is the probability of success, then the probability of getting exactly x successful event among the n trials in a Bernoulli se sequence is given by this binomial probability mass, fun mass function. So, this how many trials I will conduct this is also known to us, this probability is also known to us. Now, that the probability of getting exactly x success, so this number the number of success is the random variable that we are considering in this binomial distribution. Now, this one that probability of x which is expressed that n c x p power x 1 minus p power n minus x and x can take any value in between 0 to n. Now, each these terms are having some uh, meaning. So, n c x means that n combination x. So, out of total n outcome how many different way I can select that x, uh, x outcome. Now, if this is multiplied with the probability of success so and each success is independent to each other that is why this power to x and that should be multiplied as I, I, I told that these two events the success and failures are mutually exclusive that means that the probability of failure is automatically 1 minus p. That means the total probability is 1. 
So, the, if this is the probability of success, then automatically the probability of failure should be equals to 1 minus p and that should be for the, if the success is for x number of, x number of cases, then the failure should be for the n minus x number of cases. So, that is why these two are multiplied to get the total, uh, get the probability that x is exactly equals to x out of total n trials, which is given by n c x probability p power x 1 minus p power n minus x and obviously x can take any value between any integer value of course, any integer value in between 0 to n. Now, this n c x you know that this n combination x is expressed by n factorial divided by x factorial multiplied by n minus x factorial and this is known as this binomial coefficient. So, this now if we, we can see here, here that if we put any value of x for x equals to 0, 1, 2 up to n, then all these values are positive. And if we take the sum summation of these probabilities, we will we'll see that this summation of all these individual probability masses that is concentrated at x equals to 0, 1, 2 up to n, this would be equals to 1. So, this is the this is a valid PMF for first of all and this PMF is known as this binomial is the PMF for binomial distribution. Now, this binomial distribution is having one very uh, interesting property, this is known as the additive property of this binomial, binomial distribution, which says that if x is a random variable with binomial distribution having parameters n1 p that is number uh, that is this p is the probability of success and total number of trial is n1 and there is another distribution there is another random variable y which is also a binomial distribution having the parameters n2 and p. Now, then uh, their sum if I take the sum of these two random variable x and y their sum z should be is a random variable which is again a binomial distribution having the parameters n and p in such a way that this n is equals to n n1 plus n2. So, when we are adding two binomial distribution, we are getting another binomial distribution and the uh, while adding we should consider that the probability of success for both the random variables is same which is p. Then the summation should should have should also have the binomial distribution with the probability as the same uh, the probability of success same as those of two random variables which is p and this total number of trials is the summation of the total number of trials for the first random variable and the total number of trials for the second random variable. So, uh, Okay, here this B and this B generally we write as in the in the capital letter. So, these two should be capital letter. Now, if we see that different uh, different moments, different uh, moments of this distribution, we know that what are we discussed in this last class. So, if we see the first mo mo moment that is mean, the mean of the binomial distribution is given by is n p and the variance of the binomial distribution is given by n p into 1 minus p and the coefficient of skewness of binomial distribution is given by gamma which is equals to 1 minus 2 p divided by square root of uh, square root of n p multiplied by 1 minus p. Now, this skewness I will come uh, little le uh, later with this with this description. Before that, if we just see this uh, mean and variance here, this this can be easily easily shown like this that for a for a particular trial, one one individual trial, we we are we are claiming that this probability of success is p, and we are say, saying that there are n numbers of different trials are there. What we also assume during the discussion of the uh, probably uh, that uh, different trials, that is the Bernoulli, um, Bernoulli trials, which are mutual, which are independent. So the successive observations, uh, that successive outcomes are in independent. So what we can say that if the uh, if the expected value, this is, is the expected value for the success is p for one 
trial and there are such n trials which are which are independent to each other then obviously the total number of expected expected value of the success should be the for one trial it is p two trials it will be 2p and similarly for the n trials it will be np and so that that is why this value this np is your the expectation of that random random variable x similarly if we take that variance we know we can just say that arbitrarily that the success is 1 and failure is 0 if i say then then we can say that then we can multiply that this 1 multiplied by this p is the number of success and the number of failures should be 1 minus p so this is coming this is for the one one particular one particular trial and as there are n different um, independent uh, trial then we can say that total uh, that this variance for this whole this n different trial should be multiplied by simply by a n so this is this one is equals to your variance of x similarly we can also see the skewness that at the interesting point here that for this skewness is that this skewness and we also discussed that positively skewed negatively skewed and uh, symmetrical uh, symmetrical distribution now which is dependent on this probability of success now if we put that probability of success is equals to 0.5 then you can see that this skewness becoming zero so this skewness factor the coefficient of skewness if it becomes zero we know that the distribution becomes uh, symmetric now for the probability if the if the probability of success is and probability of failure are exactly same to each other then the resulting binomial distribution is symmetric now if this now if this p is greater than 1 minus p 1 minus p then it will be skewed to the left and we know that is skewed to the left it means the positively skewed and if this p is less than equals to 1 minus if, if it is less than 1 minus p then it is skewed to the right that means it is negatively skewed so depending on the probability of success uh, this uh, skewness coefficient of skewness of this binomial distribution changes from positively skewed to symmetric to negatively skewed next we will discuss about this multinomial distribution now it is similar to this binomial distribution uh, in the sense that the binomial in the binomial distribution we as we told that there are only two possible outcome now if we say that there are uh, more than two possible outcome then the resulting uh, uh, random variable is becoming as a vector and that the distribution of that vector we call as a multinomial distribution now if there are n independent independent trials with each trial allowing k mutually exclusive outcomes whose probabilities are p1 p2 up to pk now when we are say, say, saying that there are k mutually exclusive outcome just remember that for the binomial case we are talking about this two mutually exclusive outcomes so here we are making it general and mostly more than two so which is that the success now this probabilities are p1 p2 up to pk obviously as these are mutually exclusive the summation of this of this probability should be equals to one which is uh, written here that is summation of this all pi i from one to k is equals to one then the probability of getting x1 outcome that is one particular outcome is the number is x1 second kind of the outcome is exactly equal to x2 and in this way the xk number of outcomes for the kth kind obviously now when we are talking about that x1 x2 x3 up to xk then as, as we have already stated that there are n independent trials that means the summation of this x1 x2 xk should be equals to n so which is written here then the distribution of this kind of that where there is more than uh, more than uh, one uh, possible outcome so that probability of this exact numbers that is x1 x2 xk for the first kind second kind and k kind respectively is given by this distribution that means here the um, we are that n factorial divided by 
x1 factorial multiplied by x2 factorial x k factorial like this multiplied by their success that the probability of the success for the first kind power x1 probability of the success power x2 like this up to k. Similarly, if we just compare it with the binomial that means in the binomial there are only two possible uh, possible outcome. So, here for the first possible so that is why the subscripts are not, uh, was not there and the probability of success was p and obviously if the, prob the, if the probability so if I replace this p1 by p then obviously this p2 is equals to 1 minus p1. So, that is what exactly we got in the binomial, binomial uh, distribution. The mean and variance of this multinomial distribution, the joint probability distribution whose values are given by these probabilities is called the multinomial distribution. It is, it is so called because of the different values of x i the probabilities are given by corresponding terms of the multinomial expansion that is p 1 plus p 2 p 3 up to p k. So, this mean of this distribution can be shown that is that the n p i p i means that for a particular outcome when we are talking about the ith outcome that mean is n p i that is total number of trial multiplied by the uh, rate of success that the probability of success for that particular outcome. And similarly for the variance for that particular outcome is equals to n p i into 1 minus p i exactly similar can be this can be drawn same way from this binomial distribution. Another important uh, discrete distribution is known as this Poisson distribution and the process is known as the Poisson process and this is important when we are talking about this uh, when we are modeling this rainfall occurrence of rainfall or occurrence of this um, road accident or rail accident in the transportation engineering particularly then we generally use this kind of distribution. This Poisson distribution this Poisson process is analogous to the binomial process, but it corresponds to the occurrence of the event along a continuous time or space scale whereas, the binomial process correspond to the occurrence of the event along a discrete time scale. Now, this is important when we are talking about this binomial uh, binomial process then we are talking about the n different trials and obviously the n different trials should be a particular integer value out of that n independent trial how many uh, what is the uh, success rate and all we, we are just investigating. Now, when we are talking about this Poisson process this is generally on a continuous time scale and this continuous time scale over a time scale when this particular event is occurring. Now, or or in the, what you can say that over a particular span of time that what is the possibility of this different the number of outcomes of a particular event. If we say that rail accident then over a month of time this is the time is the month month in a month the number of rail accident that can ha happen. So, this is this can be this is known as this Poisson uh, process. Now, this Poisson distribution is used to model a particular event that can occur at any time or at any space. So, this is not only over that time, we can also say that along the stretch, along the stretch of a, a of a highway or uh, along the stretch of a, of, of a railway line. So, this can be happen in the in the time direction or in the or in the spatial direction or this can be even extended to the area. So, over a particular area that number of occurrence or it can be even extended to the volume. So, over a particular volume that number of occurrence. So, that over a continuous medium I can say now whether this can be a this can be time or one dimensional space or two dimensional space or three dimensional space. So, over over that domain that number of occurrences is modeled through this Poisson process. So, now if we consider suppose that how we can we can make the analogy with this Bernoulli's process. Now, the say we if we consider a Bernoulli's process in a certain time interval where p is the probability of occurrence of an event within the time interval. If the if the time interval decreases then the probability of p also decreases obvious. 
whereas the number of trials n should in increase. Now, n should increase in such a way that if if the decrease of p and increase of n occurs in such a manner that the product n p remains constant, then the binomial distribution approaches to the Poisson distribution. Now, if we see that uh, that the um, what are the assumptions that we should follow uh, to uh, for a for a particular process to call as the Poisson pro process, these are these. The Poisson process is based on the following assumptions. First, a particular event can occur at random at any point in the time or space and obviously, over this space means over a line segment or over an area etcetera. The number of occurrences of an event in a given time or space interval is independent of that in any other non overlapping time or space interval. So, if I say that over the temporal direction the number of occurrences over say T 1 to T 2 is totally independent of the number of occurrences from T 2 to T 3. That means, in a li line if I just start from here, so the number of occurrences in this from this uh, T 1 to, to T 2 and from this T 3 to T 4 as long as we say that this T 3 is greater than T 2 that means, these two zone are non overlapping to e each other then the number of occurrences over this interval is independent of the number of occurrence over this interval. And similarly, the same thing can be extended to the area as well as for the time and the space direction. So, um, I repeat the number of occurrences of an event in a given time or space interval is independent of that in any other non overlapping time or space interval. The probability of occurrence of an event in a small interval that is delta t is given by lambda delta t, where lambda is the mean rate of occurrence of the event. This lambda is the parameter of this distribution, where which is the mean rate means mean number of occurrences over the unit time. So, over an unit time how many times that particular event can occur. So, that is designated by this lambda which is the parameter for this uh, Poisson process. So, this should be known beforehand. So, so, so that we can we can define what is Poisson distribution. The probability of more than one occurrences of an event in the small interval delta t is negligible. So, what we are talking about there is a single occurrence in this small time interval delta t that is a unit time uh, is this one. So, this probability of more than one occurrence of an event in the small interval delta t is negligible. So, with this assumption if we define that is as per this assumption of this Poisson, pro Poisson process the number of occurrences of an event x t in the time t is given by this Poisson distribution. Okay, one thing I just want to mention here for whenever we are talking about any particular distribution it is very essential to know that what is the means which event we are which event we are calling as this random random variable. So, each and every distribution that we are discussing similarly for this the binomial dis, uh, distribution that we discussed just now and uh, the Poisson distribution all the di all the distribution that we are going to cover this class as well as in the successive classes. First what we should try to understand is the what is the random variable involved in it. Is it the number? Is it the uh, is, is it the temporal direction over the over, over the time and this thing. So, if we understand that which one is the random variable is being referred here then the the understanding of that particular distribution will be e easier. So, here that is why I am repeating here that the uh, what we are calling about this Poisson distribution the random variable random variable is the number of occurrence number of occurrence of the e event in the time t. So, that number here it is uh, it is shown as this random variable x and a particular value of the random variable is x with this parameter lambda over the time t which is denoted as by this distribution which is lambda t power x by x 5 factorial exponential minus lambda t. 
now this lambda is greater than 0 and t is greater than 0 and this discrete random random variable that is x which can take the value from 0 1 2 and it can go mathematically up to infinity where this lambda t is the mean rate of occurrence that is the average number of the occurrence per unit time so okay fine as we are talking about this unit time is specifically mentioned here this t is not uh, not required that is the lambda is the mean rate of occurrence that is the average number of occurrence per unit time so if we multiply with that t then is the total no, total number of occurrence over that particular time t the mean of this Poisson distribution now if we this uh, the first few moments if we see that mean of this Poisson distribution is gi is given by expectation of that x is equals to lambda and this mean as well as the variance of these distributions are same which are same of this parameter of this distribution which is lambda and this coefficient of skewness here for this Poisson distribution is a uh, can be um, shown that this is lambda power 1 by 2 that is uh, um, that is 1 by square root of lambda now uh, so this is indicating that if with the increase of the value of lambda so if the lambda value increases that is the mean rate of occurrence value is increases then the distribution shifts from the positively skewed to um, positively skewed distribution to a nearly symmetric distribution so for this lower uh, for this low value or the small value of this lambda this distribution is generally positively skewed now as this lambda increases it is generally approach approach to the uh, to a symmetric distribution so there is also the additive property is there for this Poisson distribution as well if there are two Poisson random variables with parameters now here this lambda 1 and lambda 2 then their sum is also a Poisson random variable with the parameter lambda in such a way that lambda is equals to lambda 1 plus lambda 2. So we can add more than one Poisson distribution and this summation is also a random, uh, random variable with Poisson distribution with the parameter lambda is a summation of the parameter of the uh, the summing of uh, random variables. So, this is the additive property of the Poisson distribution. Now, another distribution that is known as this geometric distribution. This number of trials until the first success that is the occurrence of an e event, a particular event obviously this success again here is the arbitrarily chosen. So, the number of trials until the first success that is the occurrence of an event in a Bernoulli sequence is given by this geometric distribution. Now, here what is the random variable as, a, as I was stressing that the number of trials until the first occurrence. So, if I start one sequence of this Bernoulli is process then how many trials I have to, how many trials I have to conduct to get the first success so that number so the first few failure after first few failure this first success will come so that number is here the random variable which follow this geometric distribution if the probability of occurrence of an event in any particular trial is p now you recall from this the Bernoulli's process that uh, where each trial all the trials are independent successive trials are independent to each other and for a particular trial the probability of success is p then the uh, probability that the first occurrence of the event is on the tth trial now what we are saying is that this t will take the value t the first success will come in the t will be given by this p multiplied by 1 minus p power t minus 1 how we are getting this one that is 1 minus p is the probability of failure which has occurred for the t minus 1 times before at the tth trial we get the first success so these two are independent so we are multiplying with each other to get the its distribution which is nothing but this p multiplied by 
1 minus t power t minus 1. This t minus 1 number of failures has occurred before the first success has come. So, that is why this t can take the value from 1, 2, 3 up to like this. There is one concept which is known as the shifted geometric distribution where it says that just the concept is changed to that whether the number of failures before the first success. Here what the way we discuss is the number of trials until I get the first success and now what I am saying, saying is that in some other cases also you can see that number of trials sorry number of failures before the first success. Now when we are talking about the number of failures before the first success that means that that is a little shifted. So that is supported on this 0. So that even the first trial itself is a uh, success then the number of failure before the success is 0. So, that support starts from the 0 and go up to infinity and that is generally means both are same but uh, to differentiate these two, these two factors that is generally in some text you will find that that is called as this shifted geometric distribution. But here what we are considering is that this number of trials until the first, su first success. So, that is why we are our su support here is from the 1 to up to infinity. So, this is our this is our distribution which is so thus the distribution for the geometric distribution can be uh, denoted as this the this is the pma that is which is equals to p multiplied by 1 minus p power x minus 1 wh where this p is the probability of success in each trial and this x can take value from 1 to infinity the expected value of this geometric distribution so, this is important in the sense that this we can say as the return period. This return pay period in the sense now this expected value, what is this? Now, what we are talking about this number of trials before the first success. Now, what we can say that if we take the expected value of this one, which is indicating nothing but how frequent that particular success, here the success again that, that particular event that we are referring to, how frequently that particular success is coming or returning and which is a very important term known as this return period. We will again, again discuss in the context of this uh, frequency analysis in the successive modules, but here so this uh, this is the return period that is a particular event is, is returning again which is the expected value of this geometric distribution. Now this expected value of the geometric distribution if we want to get then obviously we can get. So, before that this average time between two successive occurrence of an e event in a Bernoulli sequence is called the mean recurrence time or the return period. Remember that this what we are discussing is for this discrete random random variable, but this can as well happen for this some of the uh, for the continuous random variable as well, which we will discuss later. But here we are discussing only with respect to this geometric distribution. So, the expected value of this geometric distribution which is obviously from this basic this is the basic equation we know that we have to multiply with that that variable with this PMF and sum it up over the support. So, support here is the 1 to infinity. So, if we add if we do this if we take this infinite series and which is uh, coming to this one. So, this expected value is 1 by P. So, the mean of this geometric distribution so, this mean uh, mean of this geometric distribu distribution is 1 by p. The other uh, other moment there is a variance of this geometric distribution can be shown that this is 1 minus p divided by uh, p square and this skewness of the geometric uh, distribution again can be shown as sorry this will be the skewness coefficient gamma not uh, v here this will be gamma is equals to 2 minus p divided by square root 1 minus p. So, this is the skewness of this geometric distribution. Now, another uh, discrete distribution that is also being used in different civil engineering problem is this negative binomial distribution. This negative binomial distribution is used to find the kth occurrence of an e event in a series of in a series of Bernoulli's trials. Now, again if we see which what is the exactly that random variable we are talking about is to find the 
kth occurrence of an event in the series of Bernoulli's trials. So, earlier what we were talking about the first occurrence of that event or of that success, so here we are talking about the kth occurrence of that success. So, this one is follow this negative uh, binomial distribution. So, in a series of n Bernoulli trials, if t k is the number of trials until the kth occurrence of an event, then how we get that what is the the distribution of this t k. So, this probability that t k is equals to t which is nothing but here the p m f for that particular uh, uh, trial that particular required uh, trial is equals to given by t minus 1 combination k minus 1 multiplied by p power k 1 minus p power t minus k where this t can take the value from k k plus 1 up to in infinity and for t less than k this is equals to 0. Now, if we see this distribution the basis of this distribution we can say here that what we are taking is the at the t k th. So, that the kth occurrence there is a kth occurrence in this trial then just before this one. So, if this is equals to t. So, at the tth trial we got that kth success or kth occurrence of that event then what we can say that up to t minus 1 trial k minus 1 success has occurred. Now, if we just take that what is the probability that that k minus 1 success will come out of t minus 1 uh, trials then this is a simple binomial distribution and that distribution that probability will be given by will be given by I can write it here that is t minus 1 combination k minus 1 k minus 1 power this is p power total number of um, success that is k minus 1 multiplied by 1 minus p power t minus k. So, he, here from this binomial distribution what we are ge getting total number of trial is t minus 1 and total number of success is k minus 1. So, this distribution is give, given by this. Now, immediate next what is there immediate next trial that is the tth trial we are getting that k we are getting the kth prob that kth success. So, for this particular trial what is the probability of the success that is p again this is independent of this earlier whatever is whatever has ha has happened. So, uh, this t minus 1 number of trials has been taken where this k minus 1 success is there. So, we have to calculate this probability multiplied by what is the probability that at tth observation we will get one success. So, this one is the we are getting directly from this binomial distribution which is t minus uh, t minus 1 combination k minus 1 probability of success number of success k minus 1 multiplied by probability of failure power t minus k. Now, at this tth trial the probability of success is p because this is independent. So, that is why as, as it is independent we can multiply directly with this one which is resulting you that this required distribution t, min, um, t minus 1 c k minus 1 p power k 1 minus p power t minus k. So, this is the distribution which is known as now here this t is taking the value from k k k k onward. So, k k plus 1 until this and for this t of um, for this t less than k this is not this is 0. Now, in some of the text you will find that this one is shifted this uh, this k this k is shifted to it, it is arranged in such a way that this can be shifted to 0. So, that the support is mathematically shown from this 0 1 2 3. So, that you have to replace in, in such a way this distribution that this support should instead of k k plus 1 up to infinity it should be 0 1 2 3 in, 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 in this way. So, that is also possible, but here Mm, we, we are taking the support from k k onwards. So, the distribution function looks like this that is t minus 1 combination k minus 1 p power k 1 minus p power t minus k. So, um, 
uh, from the binomial law here sometimes this uh, um, we also call as this law this distribution from this binomial law if there are k minus 1 occurrence of an event in the first t minus 1 trial has been occur and the kth occurrence is that the tth trial then this probability of t k equals to oh, equals to this t is equals to t minus 1 combination the, this one just what we discuss is that this we will get from this binomial process multiplied by this p that is this kth occurrence at the tth trial and we will get this uh, distribution for this negative binomial distribution. Now, the mean of this negative binomial distribution can be shown that it is k by p and the variance of this negative binomial distribution will be equals to uh, k multiplied by 1 minus p divided by uh, p square. Uh, now, whatever the distribution that we are discussing in this class will be used uh, most in the in the next to next mo module where we are talking about the different uh, different application to this particular civil engineering problem with that uh, model. So, so he here what we he, oh, mm, the distribution that we are talking ab about uh, mm, this negative binomial distribution these two variance is shown. Next what we are talking is the hypergeometric di uh, distribution in a series of n repeated tri trials the outcome of the trials are not independent then the probability of x success and n minus x failures can be determined by this hypergeometric distribution considering a group of n items out of which the m are defective and remaining n minus m being good obviously. If a sample of n items are chosen at random, the probability of x defective item in this sample is given by this distribution and which is shown in this one. One basic difference of this earlier uh, distribution that is that it is a sampling with uh, sampling without replacement that is once we are taking out obviously we are not replacing it back to the um, back to the sa sa sample so back to the population so here that is why this pop, um, this one uh, that exactly x success and n minus x failures is is uh, is is considered out of this n repeated trials which is shown by this m m there a m is the number of defective item here so, m combination x multiplied by n minus m combination n minus x divided by n combination c and this x can take the value from obviously 1 to m. The minimum possible value is 1 and the maximum value that it can take is the m because the total number of defective item is m in the uh, in is m. The mean of this hypergeometric distribution is n m and variance of hypergeometric distribution can be shown that to follow uh, this expression. So, uh, so in this class with there are some uh, some discrete distribution is discussed here and there are some uh, um, some continuous distribution also will be covered in this next class or next to next class. So, whatever the distribution that we are learning with their basic properties and the basic uh, assumptions that we have done and we will see some specific application while we are modeling the different problems in the civil engineering for different discipline and that we will see later and that time it will be helpful for us to, uh, to use this particular distribution depending on the what problem at hand. So, that if we can understand which is the random variable and we are talking about and what is their probable behavior based on that we can select the uh, select the uh, distribution what we are discussing now and that will help to mo uh, help to mo model that particular random variable of the different civil engineering problems and that we will do uh, mostly in this next to next mo mo module and in the next class we will uh, Mm, we will discuss some continuous distribution what we discuss this class is a discrete and in the, in the next class and next to next class we will we'll discuss some of the standard continuous distribution. Thank you.